Hey everyone, Ken Whiting here with Paddle TV and this week we're talking about one of the best rivers in the world, bar none, and it also happens to be my backyard run, so I might be a little biased, but people travel here from all over the world. Before we get into it though, please subscribe if you haven't already to Paddle TV because we got lots more paddling guides as well as tips and paddle tales. And Paddle Tales is a series that goes on amazing paddling adventures around the world and showcases the, the top paddling destinations from the world. Uh, there's a link in the description box down below. The Ottawa River is really a world-class paddling destination. And the middle channel is one of two options that you have as a paddler. You can do the main channel or the middle channel. The river divides, it's very unique in that it splits up into those two channels uh, shortly after the put-in, which is found on Grant Settlement Road, and then comes back together right at the takeout. The main channel gets about two-thirds of, of the water, while the middle channel gets about one-third of the water. They're both about five to six miles in length and have a variety of rapids. Uh, the middle channel is recognized as a easier channel. It has rapids ranging from class two to class five, with most rapids being class two and three. Everything can be scouted, everything can be walked. It's a great uh, beginner channel, but it also has enough to challenge even the most hardcore paddler. We're gonna do things differently than we have in previous paddling guides in that we're going to walk through the whole middle channel. And that all starts at the public put-in, uh, which is provided by Owl Rafting. And it happens before the river divides into the middle and the main channel. The first rapid is called McCoy's Rapid or McCoy's Chute. And it is one of the biggest rapids on the river, hands down. Whether it's the main channel or middle channel, McCoy's is considered a big rapid. It can easily be scouted and walked from the island on the river right hand shore. The best way to look at McCoy's is to break it into two parts. You've got an upper part and you've got a lower part. Now the upper part really just has two holes. You've got saddlers and you've got fills and they're offset with saddlers being on the left and fills being on the right. There's lots of ways to get down this rapid, an almost infinite number of ways. The most common line is threading the needle between the saddlers on the left and Phil's hole on the right. There are tongues in both holes. You can just punch those tongues. But if you miss the tongues, you can easily end up in the holes themselves. There are some sneak lines as well, depending on the water level. Water levels have a huge impact on the Ottawa River. It can vary by up to 20 feet vertically. And so sometimes parts of the, of the rapid are completely gone. Sometimes waves and holes are huge. And so it's always a good idea to get out and scout the, the river. In this case, scout from the right-hand side. If you don't like what you see, you can always walk down the whole right-hand side. Now, the lower section of McCoy's is one of the most playful sections of river. It starts as the river bends to the right. You've got a feature called corner wave, a very dynamic surf wave, a wave that alone draws people from all over the place. Below corner wave, you have the horseshoe hole and baby face wave. And depending on the water levels, if the water's low, they'll be in, in full force. And they're such high quality waves that the World Championships was held in those quite a while ago. One thing to keep your eye open for in the, sec the flat section below McCoy's is the gauge. There's a gauge on the right hand shore. Uh, it's a big metal bar that tells you what the water level is at on that day. And it ranges from minus two to 20. Although the water has been known to go below it and go above it. That's how much the river fluctuates. After McCoy's, you have the longest flat water section of the river. It's a solid mile between McCoy's and the first rapid of the middle channel, as well as the first rapid of the main channel, because that's where the river divides into the two channels. The flat water sections are kind of like a maze. 
you have all sorts of little channels and islands, but as a general rule, after McCoy's, stick left and uh, follow the flow, and you, that'll take you to the middle channel and the first rapid, which is iron ring. Now, at this point, you'd have two options. You can run through iron ring, or you can take a side channel that takes you to a rapid called Little Trickle. Now, iron ring is a great option at lower water, while Little Trickle is only a good option at higher water. And so that should dictate where you go. At levels eight and below, iron ring is really an option. Eight and up, Little Trickle is the option. But that being said, iron ring is big at eight and the whirlpools and boils below iron ring at the bottom are very significant. So unless you're a very skilled paddler, probably not something to mess with until it gets quite a bit lower. In fact, if you're prone to swimming, I wouldn't mess with iron ring until it gets closer to zero. Once you get through iron ring, or if you walk iron ring, which can be done either on the left side or the right side, you immediately get to S-turn. Now S-turn, is very self-explanatory. The river does a nice big S turn. It's class two at nearly all levels, a little bit of three maybe. It's about 400, 300 yards long. Not much to, uh, to really know about there, except at the bottom. The bottom left is the S turn hole. And this is one of the best learning waves holes on the river and a place that the locals spend time with their families all the time because it's, it's such a friendly play spot. Below S turn, you have Butterfly. Butterfly is a single drop rapid. Uh, it's got a big, beautiful tongue in the middle a hole on the left hand side, a bit of a hole on the right hand side, very straightforward line right down the middle, a bit right of center. It can easily be scouted and walked on the river left hand side. Uh, a lot of people actually, instead of walking down it, more often than not, people walk up it to run again because it's such a fun rapid for new paddlers uh, or for body surfing. It's one of the best body surfing spots on the river. Now, if the water is higher and you haven't taken that channel, the Iron Ring S turn butterfly channel, you've gone to Little Trickle. Well, Little Trickle is a beautiful run on the left, eight and up. Once the water gets even higher, 12 or 13 and up, then if you want to test yourself with some creaky lines, there is some creaky sections on the far right hand side of the rapid. Uh, it's a shallow rapid and some sticky holes. It can all be scouted from the river left hand side uh, if you're doing the river left lines or from the river right hand side if you're gonna try the creaky lines. It can easily be walked in its entirety on the river right hand side. And that will bring you to Angel Kiss. Um, Angel Kiss is one of the best play holes on the river and very few people actually know about it. It's a great place to side surf, and it has a great feeder eddy up until about 12 or 13 on the, on the gauge. After that, it's hard to get back up to the hole. It's more of a catch on the fly uh, type of surf. That leads you right to the bottom of Butterfly. The two channels have come together again. And now you're on your way to Garvin's. Garvin's is one of the most dramatic places on the Otter River as a whole, and it's definitely the most uh, intense section of whitewater on the middle channel. Garvin's is more of a waterfall than a, a rapid, and it has four distinct chutes. You've got on the far right, elevator, and working your way left, you have Dragon's Tongue, ST Chute, and WT Chute. All four can be run, depending on the levels, but all four are class four and five. There's nothing easy about them and there's real consequences for messing them up. They can be walked and scouted from the river left or the river right. Either is a good option. Below Garvin's, you have a rapid called Upper No Name. And Upper No Name is just a super fun rapid to run. It's just got friendly waves. As the, If the water's higher, they're bigger waves. It starts at the very top with a great surf wave. 
uh, if you have the uh, the skills to catch that, you're not worried about flipping and ending up swimming the whole the rest of the rapid, then it's a great surf. And at some levels, it's even eddy surface. You can pull into an eddy on the river left, get back onto the wave and do it again and again and again. Nice friendly waves the whole way through, and then it ends up in an eddy right in the middle of the river behind a, a, a bit of an island that gives you a break before Lower No Name. Lower No Name is one of the biggest rapids and most challenging rapids to run on the middle channel. It can be scouted and portaged on the river left hand side. What makes Lower No Name challenging is it's pretty chaotic. There's lots of breaking waves and holes and waves. It's, it's good sized whitewater and it's hard to pick your line because there's so much going on. The line is straight down the middle pretty much, threading your way th through these narrow gaps between the holes and, and ledges that appear. The things to worry about or to watch out for, there's a ledge on the top left that can create a sticky hole, but even more importantly, on the right hand side towards the bottom, there's a, a hole called Vampire Hole, and it's, uh, it can be substantial. If you go into it at some levels, you won't come through it. You're gonna go for a surf. Uh, but that's the nature of, of Lower No Name as a whole. There's a lot of waves that can stop you in the kayak and surf you if you're not online. And so the conservative line is to, uh, to run it far left if the water's high enough and it's not too shallow, or to walk the top half of the, of the rapid on the far left and then run the left-hand side of the bottom section. From Lower No Name, you have one real rapid left. It's called Black Velvet. And Black Velvet is called Black Velvet because it's got some black velvety smooth water and waves at some water levels. It's not a major rapid. Uh, at lower water, the waves do get bigger and it's something to note is that at low water there is a rock uh, down below right in the middle of the wave train where if you're upside down it could be a, a, a head or knuckle knocker so not one to mess around with upside down but typically speaking nothing technical about it class two nice wave train to roll through this brings you to hell's half mile and hell's half mile is the body surfing section of the river. It's the last, it's not a rapid, it's flowing water. It's class one, class two, moving current. Great place to hop out of your boat, cool down, float down beside your kayak and uh, takes you right to the paddler's takeout. And the takeout is operated and owned by Wilderness Tours. It is an absolutely beautiful piece of land right at the, the bottom of Hell's Half Mile. There's a paddler's takeout that's specifically for whitewater paddlers, um, as well as a rafting uh, takeout for, the, for wilderness tours themselves. Um, there's a small user fee. Uh, you can buy an annual pass or a daily pass. If you go to wilderness-tours.com, you can buy it online before you get there and not even have to, to stop. In total, the middle channel can be expected to take three to five hours to run, depending on how much playing you're doing, how much scouting you have to do, and, and how many times you want to run some of the rapids. There aren't a ton of places to stay when you're visiting the Ottawa River, but there are some good ones. Wilderness Tours itself, which is based at the takeout, is a great option because they have camping and they have cabins and they also have meal programs if you want to get, get into those. Uh, the fact that it's at the takeout just makes it super convenient. You can literally just finish the day, pull your boat uh, up to your campsite or carry it up to your cabin and, uh, and relax for the rest of the day. Uh, another great option is the Whitewater Inn in Beechburg. If you want a more uh, a comfier place, um, if you want uh, a quieter place, uh, more sp special place itself, the Whitewater Inn is a beautiful bed and breakfast operated by Cindy Jameson, who knows the river and the trails of the area, who knows the region as well as anyone. 
There are not a lot of options when it comes to places to eat in the area, but once again, there's some good ones. Con for convenience sake, if you're staying at Wilderness Tours, camping or in the cabins, they also have a meal program. And that's a very easy way to, uh, to take care of your food. Uh, in between the put-in and the takeout, not on the river, but on the, the road, you'll also find the Whitewater Brewery. Although it's not open early in the spring or late in the fall, the brewery is a great place to get some, some uh, local beer and some great food. They also have a, uh, a uh, year-round operation in the small town of Cobden, which is only about 15 minutes away. Fantastic food, fantastic scene, well worth going to. Other than that, there's some other little quick options around the small towns. But once you get into Pembroke or Renfrew, about 25 minutes away, you have all sorts of options from fast food to, uh, to you know, sit down restaurants. If you need some guidance going down the Ottawa River or want to learn while you're here, because these types of waves, this type of big water is not something that a lot of people are used to if they're not from the area. And having a little instruction, having a little guidance can go a long way to making the, the experience more fun and more um, fruitful. And so there's a couple of options. Wilderness Tours has their Ottawa Kayak School and then there's Liquid Skills. Both uh, schools have been around for years and offer, have great instructors and offer a great service. While the Ottawa River flows right through Canada's capital city of Ottawa, the section that for whitewater paddling is about an hour and a half away in the Ottawa Valley. Now, it's not simple to get here. There's no real bus routes or trains or anything easy like that. Your best option if, is to fly into Ottawa, rent a car and drive up an hour and a half to the whitewater region. The Ottawa River's big water really lends itself to whitewater kayaking. Uh, although you do find people whitewater canoeing here too, it's not uncommon to have whitewater canoers here. Better know what you're doing though because whitewater canoes will get swamped very quickly by the big waves here and uh, you'll spend a lot of your time emptying your canoe on shore. So while the uh, whitewater kayaks are the preferred option by most people. Whitewater canoeing is, an op is another option here. One thing to note is that currently that inflatables, rafts and inflatable kayaks aren't allowed down the Ottawa River. The paddling season on the Ottawa River really starts some point in April. Once the ice is broken up and you can safely get on the water. At that time of year it's cold and the water is big, the water is high, the waves are huge. That's a great time for experienced paddlers. Typically, by the time it gets to June, June, the, uh, the water's warming up, the water's starting to come down, and it becomes a, a friendlier river to a wider variety of people. July and August is the prime time on the Otto River. The water is bath temperature. It's warm. The water is typically lower, beautiful play levels, friendly levels, and uh, you sometimes get some lineups on key play features. Uh, the fall paddling is less busy, of course, as, as people head back to school and work. Um, but it's a beautiful time of year to be on the river, and you can expect to be able to paddle the Ottawa until end of November, early December. At that point, you can still paddle, but it's really cold. For more information on paddling the middle channel of the Otto River, uh, visit wilderness-tours.com or shaggydesigns.com. Shaggydesigns.com actually has a live online water level gauge so that at any time of the year, you can check and see what the water level's at.